This is Sky Sports 1, live. Thank you, Jim. Well, Kilmarnock always make it hard work for Celtic, and after a decent recent run, hopes are high at Rugby Park. Bobby Williamson makes just one change in the team that brushed Airdrie aside in the Cup last week. Alan Mahoud is back from a ban, so Jesus San Juan drops to the bench. Nine of the starting 11 are Scottish. Killy can be proud of that, and the fact that half of the 16 players on duty came through their youth system. Yeah, he's also got a very good mix as well, Ian, because uh, when you put in so many youngsters, you do need some older heads there. And uh, in that respect, he'll be delighted to welcome Alan Mahoud back into the centre of midfield tonight. Very much the, the main man in there for Kilmarnock in the continued absence of Ian Durant. Like Charlie, looking forward to seeing young Stevie Murray playing wide left tonight, such as impact he's made since he came into the side. He may well have been the one who, who would have dropped out had Bobby chosen to play with a back three and match up with Celtic. But the 4-4-2 will suit him, Gary Hay providing the security in behind him, and that should allow young Murray to, to do, the, do the business where he really wants to do it, from the halfway line forward. Celtic are back to normal of this starting 11. Only Balder, Petrov and McNamara started the midweek cup tie against Aloha. The rest were rested, but were always due back tonight, with Killy providing one of the more tougher tests. Didier Agat and Chris Sutton remain on the casualty list, but Henrik Larsson and John Harton have scored more league goals between them than Kilmarnock's entire team. And Balder, by the way, has scored in three of his last five away games, aside from his defensive duties. Yeah, it's a more recognisable Celtic side tonight. And more good news for Martin O'Neill in that uh, Didi Agat has restarted training. Not that Jackie McNamara has done poorly on that right-hand side. He's done a terrific job. Of the three central players, Petrov, the one who will be encouraged to get forward into the box beyond the front two, he'll go and link up. And such is that the quality of Alan Thompson's final ball at the moment, early final ball, you'd have to say, that Peter Canero can't afford to stand off him tonight. Paul Lambert waiting to uh, lead Celtic, and it's one team at a time through uh, one of the tightest tunnels in football. Three weeks ago, Celtic lost to Aberdeen, their first defeat of the season in the league. Their response has been pretty emphatic. Four straight wins since, and lots of goals too. The future looks bright for the Kilmarnock kids, but what about the present? They're currently sick, they should be challenging for Europe, and they could yet be challenging for Europe. Larson usually has trouble in store for Kilmarnock. He scored nine times in five games against them last season and grabbed the late winner here in August. Larson very firmly established in Scottish football, of course, but 18-year-old winger Stevie Murray is fast making a name for himself. Murray, the latest from a seemingly endless production line of young talent at Kilmarnock. Underhill had to call off Kimmy's New Year game with Rangers here, but no problems tonight. Bobby Williamson is the longest serving manager in the SPL now. He's taken Kilmarnock into Europe four times in five years. Not bad going. Also won the cup with them and got to the League Cup final as well. Last season, though, of course, this man won the lot. Martin O'Neill guided Celtic to a tremendous treble in his first season in charge, and he's on course for same again. Celtic haven't managed back-to-back -back titles for a couple of decades now, but they're looking good to make that happen. It's the Third league meeting between the teams this season. Celtic won the first, 1-0. Celtic won the second, 1-0. It usually is that tight. It's Kilmarnock against Celtic. And they'll meet again. We do know where, and we do know when. We'll be back here in a fortnight for Kilmarnock v Celtic in the fourth round of the Tenant Scottish Cup. But it's all about points today. Three for Kilmarnock. We'll put them level with hearts and keep them on course for a European challenge, three for Celtic, will keep them very much on course for championship glory. An early touch for the former Celtic keeper, 
Gordon Marshall. Yeah, I think Bobby Williamson will feel this game has come at the right time for, for his side, Ian. He took uh, 13 out of 18 points in December. And having thrown so many youngsters in, they really are on a high at the moment. And uh, this guy deserves all the credit in the world, the command manager, for being prepared, being bold enough to throw so many kids into the side. And, and so many native Scottish kids, which is great to see. Celtic Road with an early charge. Jackie McNamara has Paul Lambert available nearby. He leaves it for Neil Menon, who slips it back to Lambert, and Larson is onside! Oh! An opportunity squandered. That's oh, an absolute snip for Henrik Larson. Good step over by Lambert. They're not picked up as he ran forward. Help yourself, he says. And the one player that Martin O'Neill would want in the end of that would be Henrik Larson. Well, that is an incredible miss from Larson. To lift it over Marshall, and lifted it away from goal. Celtic should have been ahead with a minute on the clock. It's Gary Hay, Freddy Dandalou, the Frenchman who has been a consistent performer for Kilmarnock since joining them from Lille in France, where he spent all of his career there. Valharan. It's bounced off the boot of Balder up towards John Hartson, who made his debut here in August and was a bit lucky not to get sent off when he clattered through Chris Innes. A remarkable miss from Henrik Larson of all people. Here's Mitchell. He's actually the top scorer for Kilmarnock this season, but he's only got five goals. They're uh, not a particularly free-scoring side. Here's the man of the moment, Murray, but uh, that wasn't his moment. No, you really would have put your, your house on Henrik Larson knocking this away here. Paul Lambert with a good step over, and as he continued his running, wasn't matched. Put it on a plate for Henrik Larson. He tried to dink it over Gordon Marshall, but an astonishing miss by Henrik Larson's standards, and the gaffer just can't believe it. From Henrik, unusually. And he got the winner here with 14 minutes to go back in August and got goals galore against Kilmarnock last season. Should have uh, added to his tally against them. Quite an amazing miss. Giacomo now has uh, been unable to force his way past Valharan and here's Stilian Petrov. He's uh, gone back by the Giacomo. And by Boyd, nobody ahead of him though, two youngsters up front for Killy today. To Giacomo's little touch. Peter Canero. Scottish under-21 international, whose family have uh, Spanish origins, hence the name. Nero scored against Airdrie last week, his first of the season. Rather bizarre goal, mind you, he totally miskicked it, but it still trickled in. We might say he meant it. McNamara. Lambert. Survived the challenge from Mahoud, but uh, Calderon came in as well. Apart from uh, Calderon and Dandalou, it's a very Scottish look to this Kilmarnock side. Surely a little nudge by uh, Bilharam, but the Giacomo got on with it anyway. This is some encouraging run from Canero, trying to force it through to Boyd, but Nialbi was there. Giacomo, just going to run away from Canero. Yeah, it's been a good, brisk opening start though by Kilmarnock, having got off the hook with that Henrik Larsson miss. They really have settled well, and the one thing about, about youngsters, and I, mean, I think Bobby knows that he's not going to get sustainable consistency from them, but they don't respect reputations as Kilmarnock side. And at the moment, quite happy to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Celtic. Kilmarnock do deserve uh, enormous credit. 
for their youth policy, which has unearthed some of Scotland's most exciting players. A bit similar to Aberdeen in many ways. Now by Valharan on Di Giacomo. That just gets a little bit too tight to Di Giacomo here. It's a good uh, turn there by the front player. Gown sends the free kick short to Alan Mahood, who lost his ever-present record last week, suspended for the cup tie against Airdrie. But Hartson, nicely done from him, but Kilmarnock quickly in as usual, it was Mahoot. Killy more than determined to make a match of it here, and they usually do against Celtic. They've given them some tough times in recent times without really ever pulling off a big result against them. They did beat them on the last day of last season, but Celtic put a second string out that day. Alba's mistake initially doesn't prove too costly and kept off it's an accidental boot in the face from Ali Mitchell yeah it's completely unintentional Still on Petrov slightly head down here but uh, the boot is certainly high chance for Celtic to throw the taller lads up to the back post Bobo Bada has scored in three of the last five away games he's going to put himself about that you can be sure Thompson it is who takes the free kick to Petrov on the volley, in by McNamara, no flag here, but Gordon Marshall's going to collect it anyway. Here goes to Giacomo, who's uh, certainly on the rampage here, with support from Canero. And bounced off Neil Lennon, and here is Petrov. They will be looking to steam forward, but his absence could now pose a problem as Murray has a little run at Lambert. Trying to thread it through to Boyd, but Kamara and Ruffle. Now Thompson. Stepping past Canero. In towards the feet of Hendrik Larson. Oh, Hartson, and it's going to be a free kick. Vandaloo, uh, rather McGowan, caught uh, Hartson. Yeah, caught him late. I think Alan Mahoud was getting round the back anyway to tidy up for Kilmarnock. Good exchange, though, between the Celtics' front two. I think Hartson saw it coming, managed to get off the ground, but it's a, it's a free kick in a dangerous position. Always an awkward one for the goalkeeper when it's as central as this. Stillian Petrov has uh, proved himself time and again from this sort of position. So too Maracic, but he's just sitting watching on the bench. And Henrik Larsson, of course, is another option. lining up their wall. Larson looks like he wants to make amends for that miss in the first minute, but it won't be him, and in fact it's Thompson on the left foot, but Gordon Marshall saw it coming. Kilmarnock come into this game on the back of three clean sheets. But then they uh, have become renowned for their defensive qualities. Celtic, mind you, don't give much away either. Here's Jackie McNamara. Hartson and Gordon Marshall having to push it away for the corner. That's a very fine save. Hartson did well. Just gets the, across the front of his marker here. I think it's Kevin McGowan. Half a yard. Got the shot away very early. Good block by the goalkeeper. facing his former club. Everybody jostles for position as Alan Thompson whips it in, but Big Moss claims it again. And a decent throw out as well. Balder got back though. Start at Rugby Park. Here's Valharan, who scored an injury time winner when the teams met in Glasgow in October. The only injury time winner not scored by uh, Henry Glasson for Celtic this season. Now, Balder has played them on side, but he'll uh, duly cover. His clearance has only gone to. Uh, on though, but Paul Parr 
cross from him. to uh, be amongst the contenders for the UEFA Cup place. Competition they've become quite familiar with in recent seasons. Paul Lambert is really hurt there, he's got the free kick. Calderon caught it. Uh, Paul Lambert struggling at the other thing. Adam went up immediately there. Uh, caught with the knee here, I think. Yep, right in the kidneys. Completely accidental, you'd have to say. Celtic's captain. In need of treatment and some early concern for Martin O'Neill, who has only lost four out of 60 Scottish Premier League matches, which is a remarkable record, even more so when you consider that only two of those were significant defeats. The other two came after... Celtic had clinched the title last season. Lambert gets to his feet, and whilst he sorts himself out, let me remind you that tomorrow's Premiership Plus game on pay-per-view features two Scottish managers, Southampton against Manchester United. More information on 08705 160, 160, and then Super Sunday, a colossal contest between Arsenal and Liverpool as Nicholas Anelka returns to Highbury. That's from 3 o'clock on Sky Sports 1. Interactive on Sky Sports Extra. Neil Lennon's free kick. And Boulder allowed a free header. But didn't really steer it anywhere. Useful. Nero having a run, but a cross came. Johan Mialbi covering. And Paul Lambert has rejoined us. Oh, and uh, Alan Thompson caught Mahu. That was a nasty one. Yeah, I don't think the throw-in did Al Mahoud any favours here because it, Alan Thompson was always in a position to go and press the ball. And he's caught late there as he plays it away, uh, Alan Mahoud. Not as bad as first thought, and Mahoud fine. That's Gary Hay. Murray hugging the touchline. side more than once. Kilmarnock, one of the teams to beat him though. Rangers, Aberdeen and Dundee. 
asociados. Thompson. Alan Mahood, who was once signed by Brian Clough for Nottingham Forest, but didn't last very long. And there. Hartson, Lambert, McNamara striding outside of him, but uh, Lambert got his bearings all wrong. Freddie Dandaloo. Oh, Mitchell. And Thompson only holds him up temporarily, rather cheaply given away by Calderon. Here goes Petrov, leaves it now for Jackie McNamara. He's getting a little run in the side. In the absence of uh, a cat. Yes. Now Murray. Boyd and Di Giacomo and Mitchell will be waiting in the middle. And Paul Lambert flicks it behind for the corner as Murray troubled the champions. Yeah, I might have delivered that just a fraction early there, young Murray, but uh, looks very keen to get on the ball. So one of Achilles' talented teenagers, Stephen Murray, takes the corner. Gown and Pandaloo looking to get on the end of it, but Valder's presence Moving vital for Celtic, and now Henrik Larsson. And Mahoud has won it back wonderfully. Murray. Alharan almost allowed Di Giacomo to get a sniff. He was helped out by Neil Lennon. Here's Canera. Mitchell. to send it back to Court of Marshall. Still going strong, 37 years of age. Made his last appearance for Celtic back in 1997 on the same day that Henrik Larsson made his first appearance for them. Was it Hibson? Canero to Di Giacomo. Into a corner, but he gets the throw off for Harlan. Giacomo, uh, very much a Scottish boy, but uh, Italian origins in his family, as opposed to the Spanish in Caneros. Lennon, Hartson, Henrik Larsson. Held off Pandaloo superbly. Serious strength from Larson and Kilmarnock are going to be in trouble, but the flag is up against Petro. Oh, I took the wrong option because I think uh, Harry decided to play Jackie McNamara and Petro would have been deemed to be passive here. McNamara probably the ball on the right hand side. And Petro certainly half a yard off. Dead level. In fact, that guilt edge chance that uh, Kilmarnock presented to Celtic, I think Bobby would be pretty pleased with what he's watching so far. And what they have done, they've been very positive. They've pushed young Stevie Murray right on to make really up a front three. And Jackie McNamara has had to, to drop off. Celtic more or less playing with the flat back four at the moment. Harren's clearance. Fouled by Hartson on Dandalou. John Hartson made his Celtic debut here in August and also scored his first ever goal for Wales on this ground in a friendly victory over Scotland. Alderon, Celtic's throw. Alderon part of the 
Spanish connection. Rugby Park, along with San Juan, who's on the bench today. Parks on with plenty to say to John Underhill. John just uh, telling the other John to calm down a bit. Rather him than me. Dandalou. Foul by Balder. And a free kick in a highly promising position. Well, it's a careless one to give away, it's right on the edge of the box. Still lines a bit late there, Bobo uh, Balder. This has to give Kilmarnock a chance to test Rob Douglas. Quite a few capable from this range. Kevin McGowan, terrific from the set piece. So a real test here. For Douglas. Rugby Park holds his breath, but the free kick in the end went straight into the wall, although. It's going to be a corner as uh, Giacomo's header is diverted wide. A bit more conviction, he might have really tested Rob Douglas here as the ball comes back in. I think he's got one eye in Baldi here going to attack it. He almost ducks out it. <laughs> Stephen Murray. Floats the corner in, Dandaloo's header. Oh, and it's been scrambled away. To Giacomo. Mahoud. Well, he's managing to get amongst the goals this season, Alan Mahoud, and he's always willing to, to get a shot away. But I think he does a terrific job for Kilmarnock in that central area. No Ian Durant, of course, in the longer term. And he has done a superb job in his absence. Not just a playmaker, but uh, for such a, a small lad, wins more than his fair share of ball in that area. Kilmarnock have actually had uh, 13 different scorers this season, which is more than uh, Celtic have managed, but Kilmarnock haven't got too many goals. Thompson, Henrik Larsson, the uh, hold over Dandaloo. Well, I think it plotted the early diagonal ball to try and get him away in the first place, Henrik Larsson. Larsson should have put Celtic ahead with a minute on the clock. Glaring miss, and a let-off for Kilmarnock, who have uh, adapted admirably to this contest against last season's treble winners, as we thought they might, uh, making a match of it. Here's Chris Boyd. No free kick that time. Boyd not giving up, though, and a hurried clearance from Valda. Goes straight to Calderon, who's lifted it to Murray. The RB had time. Oh, it's off Lambert, Kilmarnock pressing. Here's Mahoud. And O'Haran taking no chances with Giacomo hassling him. Corner. Stephen Murray trots across there to take another Kilmarnock corner. Calderon standing right by Douglas. Murray delivers. Douglas thought about coming, changed his mind. It was duly dealt with anyway. But Kilmarnock can try again with Peter Canero. Gary Hay. Mahood.
Romero. On by Ali Mitchell, but it will be Douglas's ball. Neil Lennon. Thompson. Larson. For all their recent endeavours against Celtic, for all the fact that they make it hard for them, the Monarch have only won three of the last 33 encounters. Balder has sliced that into touch. Yeah, Kamara doing very well here. Really, we see Celtic pinned as deep as this. Mitchell. Well, Haran took the sting out of it, and now Petrov will need help from the big Belgian. He's oh, uh, kicked there. Celtic far from comfortable right now. He knows it. Than he probably expected it with Kilmarnock. Always giving it their best shot. Bobby Williamson's side, impressing so far. You can see why he'd be pleased as well, having the, the line share of the ball, but here we go. It's Henrik Larsson and he's bearing down on goal, he's away and he's missed again! Two glorious chances for Larsson, and he's failed both times. Well, he does well to get his body between the ball and uh, Freddy Dandelo here. Saying, go on, tackle me if you want. Once again, he misses the target. He does ever so well, he gets across the front of Dandelo, so Dandelo can't really take the, the chance of tackling him in that area. Once again, he can't find the target. Well, he has only scored 142 goals in 190 games for Celtic, so obviously he needs to work when he's finishing a bit. Two cracking chances, though. And Celtic could have done with uh, at least one of them going in, because this is proving to be a considerable challenge for them. Alan Thompson's free kick. Hart turn, the flag is up, offside. Good take in the chest there by John Hartson, very, very tight. Flag is up straight away. But I think that the problem Celtic have here is that they can't get the two wide players forward. I think Johan Mialbi has now said to Jackie McNamara at times, push on and I'll pick up young Stevie Murray if it comes down that side, to try and get McNamara forward, because uh, certainly on the other side, Alan Thompson, they haven't really managed to get him in the ball at all in the last third, where he did so much damage up at Tannadish recently. Murray just couldn't keep it in then, but full of enthusiasm and energy. Larson. O'Haran and Di Giacomo do battle. Thompson. Under pressure. He's hung in there. You know, I think Bobby Williamson, that's where he'll want Alan Thompson. Midway inside his own half, where he doesn't want him. He's on the edge of his own box, wide left, playing in balls uh, into the danger area. And they really have back Celtic up well tonight, this come on at side. The Monarch always very capable at defending, but it's goals that have generally been hard to come by for them. In fact, only St. Johnson have scored fewer in the Scottish Premier League this season. And they are bottom. Half an hour played, it's goalless at Rugby Park. Now, what can Kilmarnock make of this? Ali Mitchell to send it in, away by Hartson, and as far as Gary Hay, he's looking for Murray, and he's picked him out perfectly. First time centre drilled in, and well, Hara needed to get something on it, he wasn't too sure. That's a terrific ball in here for young Stevie Murray, takes it very high as well, difficult one to take, 
plays it into the perfect area there. Russell Hannon under real pressure. Here they go again, another corner for Killy. Murray, oh! And it came off Petrov initially at the near post. Sotek on the rack a little bit. And the benefit of having a, a defender on either post, the Celtic always do. A awkward one as the ball comes in, it bounces just in front of him. First touch is excellent. Didn't waste any time getting the shot away at all. Santa Cry handball against uh, the Hood then, which has been given in fact. facing the wrong way, but it didn't really bother him. Oh, they just ended up very deep here, Kilmarnock. They're on the 18-yard line as the ball has floated in, but they end up, well, Larson gets ahead of seven yards out. Marshall's uh, resulting goal kick, straight out, so Valharan takes the throw. Picked on by Hartson, Larson trying to get in, but Kevin McGowan's pressure is proving enough. A goal kick. The one thing you know about this fella, his temperament is such that the missiles won't have bothered him. He'll keep coming back time after time, and you wouldn't bet against them getting one. 20 goals so far this season for Larson. Scrap now Lambert. Dandelut stepping in. They might not take their time about clearing it. But they do so eventually. And they get the free kick eventually. I think Johan Galvi reckoned that uh, Young Murray had fallen over his own feet here. No, there's contact here. Good decision by John Underhill. Wade and it's hanging in the air. Oh, and it might drop here. Four to Giacomo and it's blocked by Balder. Hartson's flick on, but Kevin McGowan saw it coming. Mary Hayes header, Petrov. That's a bit loose, though. <laughs> Gary Hayes wasn't quite sure where the ball had gone. McNamara gets stuck in. Celtic's throw. That's what Martin O'Neill thought. Kamara, Petrov, Lennon. Referee kick, uh, the referee perfectly positioned. Suggested that Calderon won the ball. Now, Thompson was on the collision course there and he's going to get a yellow card. Yeah, it's Peter Canero, his body checked here. Canero up in support as the Giacomo breaks here. He's uh, checked out there by Alan Thompson. Okay, 
think he come on at Fouts would have preferred the advantage to be played, and that uh, looking to have happened later. But they have it anyway. For Gary Hay. Candelou. Away by Mialbi. Awkward from, Lem uh, from Lambert. Calderon. Actually asking a bit too much of uh, Canera. The Monica 30 points behind Celtic. 3 0 30, but uh, not much of a difference between them tonight so far. Balda up towards Hartson. Away by Hay. Neil Lennon. Hartson. Ran into McGowan and here's Mahood. To Giacomo, Canero has uh, advanced down the right-hand side. And to Giacomo tried to put him in, but Thompson in the way. Valharan. Petrov. He has escaped the clutches of Calderon. He's found Paul Lambert now. Larson has moved away to the right, but it's gone to Valharan. Suddenly in. Hartson. Blocked by Freddy Dandelou. Thompson kept it in. Neil Lennon bubbled away from him a little bit. Lambert. Valder seeking out McNamara and finding him with ease. McNamara effortlessly put it under control, but the free kick is uh, given to Celtic. The peak comes. The formidable presence of Bobo Balder may well trouble Kilmarnock. So it's the left foot of Alan Thompson then to whip this one in. The flag went up straight away, but uh, Marshall will just get on with it. Thompson missed that completely. Murray benefiting. And he's really up for it. Just broken into the team. A tremendous young talent, but then you can say that about a few players here at Kilmarnock. Including Chris Boyd, who loses out there to Lennon. And Murray won it back. And Balder's challenge was typically fierce. Lambert. Now Larson, and there's maybe space to exploit here for Stylian Petrov. Larson. Chasing, but Valharan is there. He's uh, presented that straight to Mitchell, mind you, and now De Giacomo will get his chance. Canero steps away from Lambert. Mitchell, Mahood, Hay, Murray waiting to receive, and he does. Looking to tease and torment Celtic again, the teenager. Might have sold hair a little bit short there, he has. Now McNamara, if he can keep this in, could be away. Oh, he's been uh, rather crudely taken out by Hay. He's going to get uh, part of it. Yeah, I'm not convinced it's, uh, it's intentional here. Just uh, runs across the, the back of Jackie McNamara, clicked his heels.
still going to cost him a card, though. So Gary Hay joins Anna Thompson in the book. And we're inside the final five minutes of the first half. Officially full first half. Thompson's free kick. Clarkson bustling. To Giacomo chasing. Paul Lambert made great strides to get across as well, though, and <laughs> nobody else is having that ball that time. Lambert, though, shows a little bit too much of that to Mitchell, and the free kick is given against the Celtic captain. Now, Kamana getting the reward there for pressing the ball as well as they have really done from the first whistle. Ali Mitchell there doing the hustling. Brendan McGowan certainly has the power for, from this area. Everyone to the uh, left foot of Calderon. And then McGowan still there. It is indeed Kevin McGowan! Oh! Excellent effort and a stunning save from Douglas. That's a wonderful save. Terrific straight, you'd have to say as well. Loads of action in the ball, the pace is there. And but for a wonderful save from Rob Douglas, that's in the top left corner. And it was heading in and it would have been a beauty for McGowan, who's, who's done that before a few times. Murray delivers, Douglas didn't really get there but was impeded on route, I think, and the free kick has been given, but uh, Robert Douglas a quite wonderful save from Kevin McGowan. Now, what about the technique from a centre, but a wonderful strike from McGowan. And Rob Douglas, who may have expected that to go into the other corner, did magnificently to get across. And it's pretty close as far as uh, goal attempts are concerned, but then it's always pretty close between these two teams. Here's Thompson. Henrik Larsson. Just taken away by McGowan, but it's going to come to Paul Lambert, who hoists it back in again, offside against Hartson, I think. Andy Williamson proud of the way his team have performed so far, and uh, rightly so. And good to see uh, nine spots in the starting lineup. So, as I mentioned earlier, half of the 16 players on duty today have come through the youth system here. You don't see that to that extent very often these days, uh, especially could compare them to Aberdeen in that respect. It's the way ahead for clubs like that. Douglas will smother. And he made the uh, save of the half, that is for sure to deny Kevin McGowan. Inside the last minute of the first half. It's been an even contest, although the monarch might feel that they've uh, edged the proceedings. Sounds like they could always be a threat with the amount of talent they have at their disposal. Remember, Henry Glasser has missed, by his standards, two sitters. Did Giacomo might just latch onto this? He will. And Harum goes with him. Boyd wants the cross. Did Giacomo still going. Mahood arrives on the scene. Now it's Murray with time to deliver. And Boyd! Oh! What a chance, right on the stroke of half-time. Oh, it's got to go down as a sitter. It's a wonderful delivery from young Murray. He's across the front of Petrov, and all he has to do to get this, here is get this on target, and surely he scores. He's so close to, to Rob Douglas. There's a former centre-forward. Well, the manager can't believe he's missed that. This point, another of the 18-year-olds. Could have covered himself in glory there. Just one minute of added on time, so seconds remaining. 
Thompson seeking out Hartson, and it carries to Marshall. in the opening minutes and Chris Boyd missed a chance in the last minute of the half. We'll hear what Charlie Nicholas thinks of it next with Jim. Half time, it's Kilmarnock nil, Celtic nil. No goals as Kilmarnock start the second half and uh, actually for the last ten meetings here between these two teams they've been level at the break. That's how tight it has been between the uh, sides, and it's continuing in that vein, but it's been a thoroughly entertaining affair so far, David. Yeah, it certainly has. Uh, I think if either side was to make a change, it's more likely to be Celtic. I, I think Bobby Williamson would be reasonably happy with the way his side uh, is playing so far. Celtic uh, don't have a defender on the bench. They've got four uh, forward players, if you include Luba Moravcic, on the bench. And uh, I, I think if, if either side is going to make a change, it's, it's more liable to come from Celtic. Davy, of course, flew down the wings for both these teams years ago. Here's McNamara. That's a decent delivery. It was away by McGowan, though. Larson is loitering, and Dandalou for a moment looked uh, unsure. No, I think he, sorry, I think he was waiting on Gordon Marshall coming there to take the pressure off him. by Petrov on Calderon. Two players are on yellow cards uh, tonight. Gary Hay and Alan Thompson. And it's the football that has been the winner so far. Spent six years at Celtic. It's going to roll through to Douglas. He produced an amazing save. And Kevin McGowan's free kick. Scotland uh, a Ranger friendly soon. Uh, I wonder whether Robert Douglas might get a shout with uh, Neil Sullivan, of course, not in the Tottenham team at the moment. Henrik Larsson's been appended by McGowan, who was hurt in the process. That's a terrific example of Henrik Larson's body strength here, the way he turns Kevin McGowan. Kevin McGowan all over him there. Larson stood his ground, had the strength to stay up initially. And as I said earlier, Larson will keep coming back. You wouldn't uh, bet against him grabbing one here. Two glorious chances squandered by Larson in the first half, but that could yet be ominous for Kilmarnock. Alan Thompson's free kick. Gordon Marshall's save. Marshall's throw to Gary Hay. Now Alan Mahood. Peter Canero. Neil Lennon, though, covering the Celtic. Lennon has uh, been in the news a bit lately, although not for the best of reasons, perhaps. So he never invites us on his nights out, though. Larson. Celtic could be in here. And Tandalou's challenge was firm. Ah, to look at players. Gives to Giacomo the uh, brush off, but the teenager comes back to put the pressure on the Belgian international. Well, to Giacomo is 19, and uh, it's fine form towards the end of last season, and in a new three year deal. So many killy kids coming through, and there's a few more yet to uh, 
make their appearance as well. I'm sure we'll see some before the season is out. A side flags one up against Boyd. Boyd it was who had that great chance right on the stroke of half time when he steered his header wide. The sort of chance you have to take against the Ulster. Jackie McNamara, Larson, Petrov, Larson, back to Stilian Petrov, was he bundled over? Yes he was, it's a penalty, Canero the offender. I don't think he has to do this either, I think Gordon Marshall might be getting here, great reverse ball there by Henrik Larson, but the ball's going away from the goal, Gordon Marshall's reasonably well positioned to come out and get himself in a good position to block, and I think it's a needless one. Good ball, you'd have to say, by Larson. Petrov, as we saw at Tanada, he's prepared to go beyond the front players. But I think it's a needless challenge there from Peter Canero. And after an indifferent time with penalties this season, it's uh, not going to be Henrik Larson. It's going to be John Hartson. Hartson! Oh, he squeezed it in the corner. Celtic are in front. And they have been given such a testing time here tonight as well. That's a terrific penalty under a bit of pressure as well. Finds the inside of the post. Gordon Marshall guesses the right way but just can't get there. And a better start to the second half for Martin O'Neill after Larson missed that sitter in the opening minute of the first half. John Hartson has got his 14th goal in 27 games for Celtic. How will Kilmarnock respond to that? They tested their character now, we know they can play a bit. Hartson. Here's Canero. Bobo Baldo has completely <laughs> just kicked that. The previous two league meetings this season both ended in 1 0 wins for Celtic. They scored a little later in those games. With 14 minutes to go here in August and with seconds remaining in Glasgow. Mahoud's going to try from distance. Oh, and it kicked up in front of Douglas. Yeah, it's a very awkward one. Good strike there, dipping, just... Pouches in front of Rob Douglas, and it is the right thing. I don't think he can catch this. He's just going to try and get it around the post. There's been a decent response from Kilmarnock to going a goal down. Murray's corner. And, oh dear, Mitchell a rather disappointing effort and after uh, excellent endeavours of the first half even more now is going to be asked of Bobby's boys yeah the other problem is that Celtic has such a good counter attacking side that uh, so often we see them go ahead the midfield then concentrate on protecting the back three and they play on the break and they're very good at it you'd have to say the goal really came as a result of Stylian Petrov again being willing to go beyond the front two Hartson's flick to Larson. Gary Hay is there. He really wouldn't rule out a Larson goal though after those missed chances in the first half. If the Celtic uh, fans can forgive anyone for missing chances like those though, it has to be Larson. The one with Tommy Johnson in reserve, remember? They need him, and they might do soon. Celtic so usually rather hard to peg back once they have gone in front. And Hartson <laughs> is going to get a card here. As he just caught Vandaloo.
Robin Hill was watching. Oh, he's made up his mind, I think Paul Lambert should just get himself out of there. I think he's made up his mind that uh, John Hartson is getting a yellow here. Spotted by uh, John Underhill. Neil Lennon's free kick, Valder, making sure he made contact, not once but twice. Larson, just going to go away from him, yes. Goal kick. Canero. Oops, he might have bobbled a bit as uh, Mahoud went to lift that one on, but he was actually kept in. Penalty has uh, knocked Kilmarnock out of their stride. No wonder, really, but there's plenty of time for them to pull themselves back into this game. Now, uh, well, who has it? Hey. Kamara. and rolling it back to Douglas and we hear from the Kilmarnock bench that Tommy Johnson might be on his way soon to face his former club. Petrov, signed by John Barnes of course, didn't really settle at all initially, but uh, he's come good, very good. Yeah, to be fair, I don't think he was played in his right position at that time, he was, he was asked to play a left and right wing back at times, but he's right at home in the the central area when he's allowed to get from box to box. Giacomo. Canero not giving up yet. And Valharan has to come across and it's a corner for Killy. Peter Canero's persistence playing off. It's he though who gave away the penalty. Kevin McGowan will provide an aerial threat. Murray's corner right in the thick of it! And it's still not away yet. Lennon clears, but it comes back to Murray, who tries again. And this time, flying through the air, it's wide from Dandelion. Yeah, John Hartson does well here to glance off uh, Dian Bobo Baldi at the front post, but Hartson does well to put McGowan under pressure there. With a bit more time, Kevin McGowan might have managed to make that count, but he was under a lot of pressure from John Hartson. Well, they're going to uh, make that change now. Chris Boy coming off, and on comes the former Celtic man, Tommy Johnson, who scored the tight clinching goal against St Mirren last season. Four years at Celtic, a lot of injuries, but uh, a lot of timely goals for them as well. And the genial Geordie, who had a spell with Sheffield Wednesday earlier in the season, is the man Kilmarnock hope will rescue them against his old club. Giacomo battling with Balda. Lambert. Hartson. Fending off Dandaloo and now Gary Hay. Hartson. Brilliant. Always put Jack Namar Jackie McNamara in. Henrik Larson waiting in the middle and it's just bounced off his chest and through to Marshall. That's a fabulous piece of football. All started by a terrific ball by John Hartson to get Jackie McNamara down the outside. That wasn't a bad ball either from Mahoud. Mitchell, though, allows Lennon to recover it for Celtic. Petrov. Larson. And uh, free kick will be given from instruction by Mahoud on Petrov, who certainly felt it. Well, this has really been the, the story of this match. It's been a real physical contest from the, the, the first whistle. And whoever second they must be at losing that goal. You can hardly say that the commander heads have gone down. They're still in there. 
contesting everything. If you don't mind, Stillian, once you get some treatment, we'll tell you about the games on tomorrow. Southampton in a bit of form at the moment. Manchester United, oh, they're not doing too badly either, I suppose. More information on our pay-per-view game on 08705 160 160. Gordon Strachan against Sir Alex Ferguson, always interesting too. And that's always interesting too. Arsenal against Liverpool is the Super Sunday on Sky Sports 1, with interactive coverage available on Sky Sports Extra. And added a Nelka twist to that game, of course. And uh, if that wasn't enough, it's Real Madrid Valencia tomorrow night as well. Some Sunday for you. Don't move from the sofa. Almost an hour played. Petrov just about ready to resume. Lambert's header. He'll be first to it. McNamara with his left foot. Oh, it's actually gone through to Hartson. Vandalou stopped it from going through to Larson. Lambert. Oh, he's gone through by himself, Paul Lambert! It's a second for Celtic. They have weathered the storm at Rugby Park, and they are very much in charge now as the skipper shows the way. Yeah, he doesn't get too many, but uh, normally they're a bit special when they, they come around, and this set uh, is no different. Good clearance by Dandalo, but how's this for composure? A little pink over the top. Takes it on the half volley. Then sneaks it inside. Got the Marshall's left-hand post. Wonderful solo goal from the captain. And Kilmarnock, having been right in this just ten minutes or so ago, really have it all to do now. Typical of Celtic, really. And they really need to, they produce the goods. And that is the sign of champions. Paul Lambert's uh, first goal, by the way, since the opening day when he uh, got two in one game against St. Johnson. He normally only gets about two in one season, but uh, he's already on to three for this campaign. Composure from the captain. Tony Johnson. Murray looking forward to Giacomo, but Van Haren charges it. Who were full of expectation during the half time break as they munched on their pies. They've all gone uh, very quiet now. It's the Celtic fans occupying either end of uh, Rugby Park who are singing. Had a lot of practice with their singing this season. Alan Thompson's challenge has released. Henrik Larsson, Petrov, and it's going to be a free kick for and fouled by Canero, who's also going to get a card. Yeah, a little bit of Henrik Larsson there, but uh, Celtic in a very good position to break here. Hartson all on his own there, had the money to, to work the ball wide right. Peter Canero, the uh, fourth player to be booked, two from either side. Not so level as far as goals are concerned, though. Thompson. Neil Lennon, last man back. Towards Hartson, away by Kevin McGowan, but it's merely going to come to Jackie McNamara. Corner off Gary Hay. Celtic in the comfort zone now. Their uh, lead at the top, cut to ten points earlier by Rangers, who easily overcame Livingston. Perhaps a little bit easier than expected, uh, bearing in mind Livingston's standards these days. But uh, Celtic relentless, really, as they power towards more glory. Thompson sends it in, oh, and Hartson's header crashed off the bar, and it could have been three. 
Still might be because Larson tries to get in, and that will be another corner. Well, that really would have been game over there. I think it just gets off uh, Kevin McGowan here at the front post. Allowed an awful lot of room in there. It's Petrov to deliver. Oh, it's going to come to McNamara. A side flag's gone up as Lennon sent it swirling out in the uh, direction of Petrov. Oh, what a super goal this was from Paul Lambert. Wouldn't fall from here and it eventually has to take it on the drop. A little cushion there on the thigh, has to take it in a half volley. What a good job he made of him keeping it down. Johnson tried to get the cross in, but Celtic in control. Which certainly couldn't be said in the first half, but can be said now. Hartson looking for Larson, away by Dandaloo. Remember, these teams meet again here in a fortnight's time in the fourth round of the Tenant Scottish Cup. We'll be here for that one as well. to do it is get young Stevie Murray on the ball and you know, he probably have fancied had he got to supply the ball into feet or run at Johan Mialby who really has gone man for man with young Murray down at the left hand side now but they haven't really managed to introduce him to the game in the second half Calderon the hood there's Murray positive play, I mean he doesn't get the ball into to the box because he's taken out here, but this is what Kamara need, they need some of the wide players to, to try and get in behind and get a decent cross in. Centre defenders, down and Dandalou come up, as Kamara look for a way back. And they're going to get some reward for their efforts tonight. Stephen Murray delivers. Gowan was rising. Oh, it's been diverted wide for a corner, but that was mighty close. Yeah, I think it just falls slightly behind uh, Tommy Johnson here, I think it is. He comes back here. Just slightly behind him. Can't really get any power on it. Eventually, come off by Murray sends it in. Douglas not there. And Bowder was there. Sandy Mitchell drilled it back in. Murray. Petrov snapped in. Midway through the second half. Mitchell. Gary Hay. Mitchell again. Giacomo has Thompson to contend with, but he's contended with him. The support from Mitchell now, away by Valhara into the stand. Well, when we see it, Kamarnik's still well in the game. How many times have we seen this this season? Celtic having the least of the possession, but being in front. Now Lennon marshalling that one behind, fending off the threat of Ali Mitchell. Martin O'Neill, only the second Celtic manager to win the treble, following in the legendary footsteps of John Steen. But how about back-to-back -back trebles? It is a distinct possibility for the man who has transformed this famous club and uh, it's a shame they haven't got any money to give him really to uh, spend on furthering their ambitions
Johnson. Hey. Mitchell had made a run to the middle. Canero. Cut out by Lennon. Hartson fancies a bit of that. Hood covering. Just as well with Larson lurking, but Henry not giving it up just yet. Only uh, scored once in their last seven games against Celtic, so the uh, comeback is asking a lot of them tonight. Twenty minutes left at Rugby Park in Ayrshire. A penalty from John Hartson and a super strike from Paul Lambert, putting the champions on their way to. Yet another victory, and they have won 20 of their 22 games in the Scottish Premier League this season. One draw against Livingston, just one defeat at Aberdeen. It remains a remarkable record. I just think when they get in front, uh, <laughs> they're so difficult to beat, they're so good at shutting up shot. I think from now on you'll see Lambert and Lennon sit both sides for the remainder of this match. Petrov will be asked to try and get forward to help the front two. But by and large, the midfield group will drop off and concentrate on giving that back three protection. <laughs> I've <got> Murray <laughs> pushed out of the way by McNamara, but the decision has gone in Celtic's favour. Well, as, as Charles said, I mean, he showed tremendous uh, enthusiasm with the, the youngster. Again, maybe just uh, a bit too much there. A little bundle of energy, 18 years of age. I think we'll be hearing a, a lot more about him in the years to come. And uh, he's not the only one coming through in that way. To Kilmarnock, of course, there are plenty. Hartson trying to nudge Gary Hay out of the way. Now Alan Mahoud. Blocked though by. Petrov. Calderon. To Giacomo. Neil Lennon wrestles it back. Celtic uh, might consider a change soon to freshen things up. To Giacomo. Oh, that's a stray one. Most of these players pretty fresh anyway for Celtic after the majority were rested for the midweek cup trouncing of Alloa. It was uh, virtually a reserve side that played in that game. Although Balder did figure and scored indeed the uh, first of the goals with a little help from the Alloa keeper, mind you. comes a long way and it's easy for the former Celtic stopper but casual from Calder on then and Kumara putting himself about but between them Hay and Calderon are able to almost pick out Tommy Johnson but trust Balder to be in the way here's Hartson Killier put a man down I don't think Hartson's realized as he tries to charge his way through Still uh, down up. Eventually, play has been stopped. Yeah, I'm not convinced they were aware that uh, Young Money was was lying down, but I think John Underhill did the right thing. 
made up his mind to, to bring it to a halt. Don't think there's a great deal in that. Well, Lambert uh, came over to uh, check on Marin was immediately concerned and uh, calling for the physio. Oh, that's why. I do apologise, young man. <laughs> very effective for Kilmarnock also in the first half tonight but he's had a really good run in the side and has become a bit of a hero I think he runs into Paul Lambert as much as anything else there I don't think a nosebleed is going to keep this uh, young lad out of the action for very long Celtic meanwhile are Going to make a change, and Bobby Petter is uh, going to come on maybe for Alan Thompson. I would think if it's going to be a straight swap. Um, in fact, it's Neil Lennon who is going to go off. I thought he was just uh, catching a drink over there, but uh, Lennon has been replaced by Bobby Petter. We get to hug off Jonathan Gould as well. Yeah, still there, Petrov will now play inside right of that midfield five. Petter wide left, Alan Thompson will play one in now on the left-hand side. Doesn't really affect it, the balance of that Celtic midfield, but it does give them some more natural width, as we're seeing right now. Yes, Petter involved straight away. Although that is going to be a goal kick. From the Ipswich man, Bobby Petter, scored in the uh, cup against Alloa midweek, but has yet to score in the league for Celtic. He cheers for the return of Stephen Murray, albeit with a slightly bloodied nose. Here is Murray, eager to get involved again. Tommy Johnson. It's a uh, cross which in the end had too much on it. Well, I think Bobby Williams would have been quite happy with that amount of the ball had you offered him it before the game, but uh, I'm sure he would admit most of, of the real clear chances have, have fallen Celtic's way. Celtic heading for their 18th win in their last 19 league games Petrov found his route blocked and Gary Hay who's already on a yellow card or rather Murray it is who's uh, kicked the ball away just as well it was in because Gary Hay would have been in trouble Murray gets booked well Calderon I think takes some of the ball there I think he's unlucky and maybe that's why young Murray was so frustrated Stephen Murray kick then for kicking the ball away. Alan Thompson sends it in. Larson is there. Off target again from uh, Celtic's main marksman. Tommy Johnson. Looking to lead Kilmarnock on a late rally here, and he's found Di Giacomo. Back to Canero. He just got unlucky there with the Canero. Stephen Murray, the uh, fifth player to uh, get a yellow card in this game. James Fowler waiting to uh, come on for Killy. Scottish under 21 international. He's actually been a, a regular starter recently. And it's Stephen Murray who's going to go up. But just listen to the reaction from the Kilmarnock faithful to this talented teenager.
Fowler is uh, 21, which is quite old by Kilmarnock yeah, standards. He's, busted, he? <laughs> he's a veteran. <laughs> of a Murray now, Calderon will send the corner in, away by Balda. So Giacomo, looking to shrug off Petter, who uh, might have fouled him then, yes he did. Now if they're going to get one, they need one now, come on up. Starting to run out of time now. With a decent ball in here. being told to get back a bit. Carter on then, sends it in, but <laughs> unceremoniously booted away by John Hartson. His penalty set Celtic on their way. Paola has to go back to Hay. We'll go back even further. Marshall's kick out has presented Henrik Larsson with the opportunity to add to Celtic's lead. And Hooper recovered. Romanek had only lost one of their last seven games, and it showed the way they set about Celtic tonight, but. Uh, Although it looks like the champions are on course for another win, there's every reason to uh, feel encouraged if you're a Kilmarnock fan at the moment. I don't rule them out for UEFA Cup spot yet. I'm sure they'll be uh, challenging. Yeah, I mean, if Celtic hold on, this is a big win because uh, this was always going to be a really tricky game. Kevin Kilmarnock's uh, recent form. But as you suggested, I mean, there is a freshness about Celtic. Quite a few of the side have had a rest for the Cup tie. They were, they were allowed a few days off as well. And there has been a freshness about them tonight. McGowan. Carver on with a loose one. Hot turn. Kevin McGowan hooks it away from the oncoming Larson. Here's Bobby Petter. Turn here in the Scottish Cup. McGowan has to deal with this. Kilmarnock have uh, six minutes left to try and set up a rousing finale but it's asking a lot to do that against Celtic although hang on a moment 
Giacomo has got his cross in. Johnson tangled with Mielby. Gowns header. There's Petrov though. Damara. Out for a throw by Alan Mahout. Another change being made. Another youngster coming on. Emilio Giaconelli, who is an 18-year-old striker. Good old Scottish name. He is an Ayrshire boy. And he's coming on for Antonio Calderon in another of uh, the youngins at Rugby Park. And he puts himself about a bit, this boy. Hasn't got much time to do that, mind you. Christmas. Tommy Johnson was impeded. Sandwiched, in fact, between Petrov and McNamara. Oh, the referee uh, not happy with where the free kick has been taken at all. Kilmarnock finally get their act together in that respect. The mistake by Mahood, charged down by Hartson. We could get it back here from Larson. He has John Hartson. And, uh, Did well to get back there, Alan Mahood. Redeem his own mistake there, having given the ball away in midfield. That's going to roll through to Robert Douglas. Conceded uh, five goals on their travels this season. They've actually led in more at home than they have away. Only one more, though. The best defensive record in British league football. It looks like another clean sheet for Robert Douglas. So scored goals galore in the league as well. I think only Manchester City and Luton are uh, close to them in that respect. Giacomo's throw to Mahout. It's all gone rather quiet at Rugby Park, though. Celtic have taken the sting out of the Kilmarnock challenge. The big results of the season this for the champions and some would say champions elect. Kilmarnock, it's a familiar story, they always run Celtic close without getting a big result against them. They uh, saw off a second string on the final day of last season here, but once again they've had no reward for their endeavours, which have been considerable. Giaconelli having a go. to work for it tonight, but uh, Martin O'Neill's side's not averse to working for it. Yeah, it's been a, a decent match. You can see that uh, neither side has been shy in front of goal tonight. Time to pick your man of the match, though. Well, I think Alan Mahout's been outstanding in midfield. Uh, I think he and Tony Calderon did very well against the Celtic central three midfield players. But uh, Paul Lambert, for me, has shown tonight uh, not just why Celtic are ready to extend his contract, but why the, the new Scotland manager, whoever he is, really has to ask him if he'll pull on the dark blue again. He, he strolled through this, and he came up with that superb second goal uh, as well, of course, and I think he's a very worthy Bank of Scotland man of the all tonight. Where it's going, he might be the new Scotland manager. <laughs> Took their time over the appointment. Free kick has been given for that challenge. Kilmarnock may have left it too late. 
and they breach this also solid Celtic defence in the last minute of normal time. Mitchell delivers. And there was a trip by Hartson on the gown. Just two minutes of added on time. It's taken quickly. It's going to be a corner. But there really isn't much time left for Kilmarnock to get two goals back. Gilbert away by Valharan and we are in added on time another test this for Celtic's defence snapshot from the man who's just come on Jack and Nelly. yeah a difficult one to take on the half ball he doesn't really manage to keep it uh, down I don't think Kilmarnock have done an awful lot wrong tonight and they really have stuck at it. I think Bobby can be reasonably happy with what his lads have given him tonight. And Celtic, when they get ahead, are so difficult to, to come back against. Here's Hartson. Dandaloo, Mahoud. Intriguing when these two renew acquaintance in a fortnight in that cup time. Celtic, though, have been the dominant force in this fixture. To Giacomo trying to end the game on a high for Kilmarnock, but look who's there, Bobo Barla. have won 11 of their last 13 encounters with Kilmarnock but uh, they've often been close affairs it's all over and a big result this for Martin O'Neill's men